And the other big thing, like, and I mentioned this at the top of the podcast, I was, and I'd be curious to know what your take on this is. I was really disappointed with Schuster. Um, if you look at the first leg of this game, and Schuster was actually a pretty big talking point in that game because normally a pretty reliable passer uh, in his in his profile as a player, he had multiple bad giveaways in the first leg. Um, one of them, I remember Van Boston actually gets a break from but doesn't score from in the first leg. Um, he's also like, he's doing a bunch of things. He's everywhere from playing center back to center mid in that game. Um, he's actually, you know, his touches under pressure are pretty good. And um, he actually had an overall pretty good game in that first leg, all things considered. The second leg was really, was really disappointing from him. And I, and I thought like he just was a little bit too cute on the ball at certain times. And I, I guess that's kind of part of the player he is. He likes to be delicate with his touch. He likes to kind of bounce and, and play with grace. But a lot of this under the zonal marking of Milan and the, and, and the pressure that they were putting on in certain areas in midfield, it was it actually led to a lot of giveaways, bad passing, bad dribbling sequences. And I think that also trickled to the rest of the team. I, I'm not, I'm not going to single him out and say that it was just him because even if you look, especially Paco Llorente had a couple of shocking bad giveaways in the second half when Real Madrid were just done out of this game. But, um, but, I, but it kind of starts there. Like this, it's basically, Matt, like what is it? A Schuster-Vasquez double pivot is kind of the way this, this works, right? With sometimes Gallego Sanchez stepping into midfield and... Um, it kind of starts there. That's where the spine was, and I don't think the spine was strong enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think I would have preferred to have seen Sanchez just play midfield. I think you needed his intensity in there and someone who could kind of roughen things up and go shoulder to shoulder with the AC Milan midfield and put some pressure. Because like you said, they just had far too much time and space on the ball. And we, Butragueno usually plays that withdrawn forward role. Sometimes Paco Llorente was in there. Um, and those two just, they, they, they don't have that same kind of focus on the defensive responsibilities in midfield. They're more forward thinking players, attacking players. And so Real Madrid were outnumbered for most of the night in midfield. And that's where, that's where they struggled. Um, and I just wanted to mention to one guy who, I wasn't really familiar with from this AC Milan team. You hear all the names, you hear Rijkaard, you hear Vamas and like Barresi, Maldini, you know, all these guys, you know, all these names, but over the two legs from watching these two legs, the guy who really impressed me that I didn't know much about was uh, Donadoni. I thought he was so impactful. Um, whether he was playing on the left or playing in the middle, middle of the park, like he could cross, he could dribble, he could find a good pass. He had a shot on him. Like it, he, did the, he had the work rate as well. I mean, everything, everything. And I was, it's not a guy I was familiar with, but really, really impressed with. I like Donadoni in this game. I also like from a, from a Milan perspective, although this is not like, this is still a very young Maldini. I thought he, he pretty well had Paco Llorente and Michel in his pocket all game. Like there was one moment where I think it was, how was it? Was it Llorente or was it Michel? Let me see if I can find it. It was Llorente. Llorente <clears throat> does this like nice quick shoulder drop. Uh, he pretends he's he's cutting back, but then he goes down the wing and he gets Maldini for a split second. And then Maldini's like, no, no, I got I'm I'm there's no way I'm letting you do this. And then he just recovers so masterfully and takes the ball from him. Um, so it was cool to see a young Maldini do things. And um I since listen, it's a it's a Ramjit podcast to make this as relevant as possible. Carlo Ancelotti is a uh, the more I get to know about him as a player, the more I am impressed with him. I, th- I think he's been fantastic. And, you know, just watching these two games, these two legs, it's, it's really opened my eyes. I mean, we kind of knew, I remember like Lucas and I had a question on the, on the mailbag at some point, like what, like who are the best manager players? Like if you combine their players and their managerial and playing careers together, and obviously like Cryef and Zidane are, are two that pop up you know, Pep is there. Ancelotti is like probably top five as like player manager kind of duo and stuff. So um, do you want to talk about Ancelotti's performance here? I, I liked, there is like, there's a quote that Sachi says um, about Ancelotti where he says, Ancelotti is like not the most talented player, but he plays with his head, which obviously means it just means he's cerebral. He's smart. He knows where to be. But from a technical perspective, I really like what I see from, from Ancelotti. Um, 
I like his dribbling. Obviously, he's a, he's a great shooter from distance. Do you want to talk about Ancelotti's performance a little bit? Yeah, and he he was 30 years old in this match, so um, starting to enter kind of those those uh, twilight years. But I was actually taken aback by how quick his feet were because there was one moment I, I don't know if you remember this kind of out defending his own box. He wins the ball. He's almost on almost looks like he would be a right back where he wins the ball. I think it was off a corner kick, and he produces a really nice piece of skill where he just switches from one foot to the other inside outside and then gets drawn for a foul and he does it so quickly with his feet I was like wow I didn't think Carlo had that in him and so um he I I just to your point I think he was just a very tactically adept player like he always when, when he was playing on the wing he always knew when to tuck in he was always in the right spots to recover the ball uh he could play on the wing or in the middle and um he did honestly. He did remind. I mean, he's not at their level, but he did remind me of a like Modric, Cruz type 